Welcome. I'm here to do a reading um, because, as always, I am picking up on some um, shady, shysty shit, and so I'm going to get into it. Welcome um, if this is your first time here. Welcome if you are returning. Um, welcome if you've been here from the beginning or you joined somewhere along the way. Um, I'm just going to get into this reading because this energy is really, it's pissing me off today. And it's not just pissing me off today. And 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 granted, you know, this is the nature of these cycles, but um, some beings just don't know when to stop. But I'm feeling very, very strongly that um, we are, we are reaching, like, there was this energy that came in right around the eclipse season that set off this a very powerful tipping point energy, right? A tipping point, and remember, energy works um, kind of like a, a figure eight, kind of like an infinity sign. So whatever is happening on one pole is happening on the other pole until it balances out. So right now we are dealing with a lot of energies in this ascension that are polar opposites. So on the one hand, there's a tipping point that is um, allowing certain beings to rise into their power and their truth that uh, the only reason they weren't able to is because of all of the restrictions that these other uh, fucking assholes have been trying to, to enforce upon uh, humanity and certain beings. Um, and then there there's a tipping point where there is a very speedy, ascension that is about to occur and is occurring already for many of these assholes that have tried to um, profit off of other people's pain um, and uh, and uh, try to keep them therefore in states of pain through binding them. Um, there is a very tight energy that's occurring right now. And I really do feel, you know, partly what it is, is that I do believe that the sun is conjuncting Mars right now. And I think it's at the 23 degree and, and not for nothing, the 23 degree mark is a degree, is an Aquarian degree, astrologically speaking, right? Um, and it breaks down also to a five. And so you can also um, take your mind back to the full moon in Taurus, which was the last eclipse of this season, and the degrees that Mars and um, Taurus were in for that, uh, the sun in Scorpio, sorry, not Mars, the degrees that the sun in Scorpio and, Mar and uh, the moon in Taurus were five degrees. It was five, five energy. And so this uh, sun conjuncting Mars 23 is again, five, five energy in a different way. But this time, because it's 23, it's also an Aquarian degree. There is a very uh, big shift that is happening energetically right now. And I really do believe it began to heighten as soon as um, Mars entered uh, 22 degrees. It was there uh, on Monday for the new moon. But when the sun hit that 22 degree mark in Scorpio. I really want my guides have been calling it. They said to me, um, Phoenix rising codes, Phoenix codes, Phoenix, not codes, Phoenix activations is what they said to me. And when I went in with them, they were showing me about how uh, those beings who have done the true alchemical work, which can't be faked, by the way, bank source, those beings who have done the true alchemical work are getting ready to really rise. And Sagittarius season is, is bringing forth the energy that many need to be propelled. And as such, um, you should remember, you should know that anytime there's a big rising energy, anytime there's about to be a monumental shift or there's a monumental shift happening energetically, it's always when things begin to feel tighter. It's always when these energies that are at war against you in any way on any plane are going to come in stronger. Um, there's a lot of messy energy right now, just messy energy um, coming from all kinds of people. Um, even people who claim that they're healing or want to be divine or whatever it is. This, this is why I'm so thankful, like I said, that energy don't lie. Because um, some of the, the very ones who, who are walking around complaining and listening to readings and saying that they're being energy harvested are energy harvesters. They are running around um, trying to get everything they can for themselves and not replenishing anyone else. Or they're sloppy with their energy and they don't give a fuck about how it affects anyone else. And it's just like you are the problem. You're trying to run away from the problem, but the problem is you. You get what I'm saying? And there's a lot of that happening right now, but it has to happen. I'll tell you why. Because the new moon in Scorpio is all about the energetic structure.
structure of the systems and the institutions that have wielded power over us. Taurus and Scorpio are the signs of the zodiac that are concerned with power. Taurus with your personal power and Scorpio with the distribution of that and the systems that control that. So as such, a lot of these energies are being shown to us, they're being reflected back to us and how we are still, um, you know, we are still uh, uh, involved in certain aspects of the energy harvesting programming because we've all been a part of it. We're all trying to remove ourselves by healing. Some of us are doing a better job than others. It needs to be said because I'm tired of selfish assholes always wanting to take and, and never having any kind of value for what it is that people have had had to work really hard for not only in this lifetime but across timelines and many lifetimes to accrue for themselves and they just want to come and take 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 go fuck yourselves and get your own okay um because i'm tired of it i'm tired of 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 people who um who also are running around looking for 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 you to be your, their savior because you have some answers that you had to work really hard to get and they don't want to value you in your autonomy. They want to just leech on to you and take, go fuck yourselves. I'm so done with it. And and there's there's about to be such a shift in the way that healers are um, going to be um, dealing with how they let people into their energy. I was watching um, my guides every now and again have me, I'm, I'm, I'm hyped tonight, by the way, in case you didn't realize. So um, yeah whatever, I don't give a fuck. If you can't handle it, leave. Um, my guides had me watching um, this Netflix show, The Sad Man. I watched it months ago, but they had me go back to it to explore um, this idea of the endless and the dream and, and all of that as we were going through the uh, that hanged man portal I was speaking about between Libra and Scorpio season. Anyway, I got to the end of the season and the final episode is really interesting because it speaks about this writer who captures a muse and then sells this muse to another writer and they just use this goddess and they rape her and take her um, her, 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 her um, ideas and her creativity and they profit off of it and they keep her locked in a room to just abuse her. And at one point she goes to them, she goes, she goes to the, the writer, the most recent one who's, who's you know, um, who's taken her and is uh, feeding off of her gifts instead of doing things the right way. And she said to him, I'm a goddess. If you want something from me, I will give it to you freely, but you must come bearing gifts. I'm a goddess. And here's the thing. Many of you, especially those of you who are in, um, you know, in positions where you will be utilizing the power of your gifts to help to uh, create a new earth and to help um, new earth principles to rise. There is going to be a very, uh, there's a very powerful shift in terms of how you negotiate your power that's coming forward for many beings because these energy harvesting um, models and tactics of the matrix must die. And if we are the ones who say that we are are creating this new earth, we're creating a new reality, we're tired of being energy harvested, then guess what? Maybe we should stop doing it to one another. How about them apples? How about that? So this is what this energy is really like showing us. It's showing us all. If we are brave enough and honest enough and humble enough to see it, we're all being shown where we are taking and not giving back. And all of us are guilty. I don't care how ascended, anointed, healed, I don't give a fuck. We all have ways of doing it because we've been programmed into it unconsciously. So on the one hand, there is that, there's a tension of all of this um, stuff that is like, um, you know, when you are, um, I don't know, they're giving me this um, image. I know nothing about like, um, uh, like heating up a metal to, to, to get rid of its impurities, I guess it's, it is a form of alchemy, right? So they're showing me how it has to be heated up and the dross has to come. So on the one hand, um, a lot of what we're feeling in terms of the tightness, it is that it is we're being, um, we're being, the temperature has been raised in certain areas internally in order for the dross to come up. Certain beings are coming into our fields to show us where we need to raise our own value also. And we need to walk the walk moving forward because the shift 
is coming. The tipping point is here. Certain beings are going to a higher level, you know, um, and then other beings are going down. And I feel it very strongly. And when the sun hit that 22 degree mark, 22 is a master degree. It is also a degree that is connected to Capricorn, which is all about the birthing of contracts, the things that um, we do here on the earth, how we negotiate who we are divinely on this plane. There is a shift. And you might also really be feeling this tightness and this energy because that's, a, you, you know, you're on the cusp of breaking through into um, a higher reality. But here's the thing, you must work with that energy. You must know what it's trying, what it's trying to work in you to help you to bust out of, um, it's busting through another ceiling. And anytime um, you are uh, busting through another ceiling, all hell breaks loose in your reality. This is also how you know you're shifting, is when you um, all hell seems to break loose, whether it happens internally, externally, or in both ways. Um, and that's where the attacks can feel really very um, aggressive. And the reason that they feel aggressive is because at every turn, um, the opposing energy doesn't want you breaking the ceiling. The opposing energy wants you, you know, uh, collapsing in despair and being like, I can't go any further. It's never going to get any better. Yada, yada. It wants you collapsing in that way. It wants you succumbing to fear. Um, it wants you doing all of that. But this is when you rise up and you say, go fuck yourself. I know who I am. Get the fuck out of my way so I can pass. Okay. That's what you do. You know, that's the energy that um, many of us have to be in right now as we get ready to move into Sagittarius season where uh, there will be a lot of shifts that begin to actually start to occur for many of you moving into Capricorn season um, where some of this stuff for you is going to begin to materialize, okay? Um, on the topic of fear, there is a lot of fear flying, right? Like a lot. And the way my guides are showing it to me, they're showing it to me in a few ways. So on the one hand, um, you know, it's like kind of when you detox. So when you detox and you stop, um, you know, eating toxic shit, um, which is really difficult in this fucking matrix, right? But when you stop eating the things that are, um, you know, really causing the most damage to your system, um, before you, and in, in, in in herbal medicine or in holistic and naturopathic, um, you know, modalities, we call it a healing crisis. So before, and this is what pushes many people away from wanting to continue down the road of natural healing is because when you start to heal yourself before you begin to get better, sometimes the symptoms will escalate. And that's because it's, uh, it's your body responding to the treatment and pushing out the poisons a lot of the time and um, to just oversimplify it. And a lot of the time that pushing out of the poisons will give all manner of symptoms that may appear like the, like the issue is getting worse. Kind of like when you detox and the whole point is so that you can feel better and you can be less bloated and your skin can clear and you can have more energy. But when you start, you know, um, doing certain detoxes, all of a sudden you feel really tired. You're super bloaty. Um, you, you, you can't regulate your own um, digestive processes. You break out everywhere. But if you continue to push past, if you're detoxing in the right way and most we're not going to get into the to I'm not going to put on my uh, holistic and functional nutrition hat tonight, but there's a way to detox and most people don't honor the fullness of each system in detoxing and what is required at every level. But the point is, if you are doing a proper detox and you are persevering, okay, after day three, almost it's almost always three days before you begin to, to feel the shift. That's what's going to occur. You're going to realize, oh wait, I'm beginning to feel a little better and you're, you're only going to get markedly better as you continue to persist and close it out and then um, create a lifestyle that um, is sustainable and healthy moving forward from that as best as you can, right? So I say all of that because this is kind of where we are right now. Um, 
I I don't know where I said it. Maybe it was in the New Moon and Scorpio Tower Astrology reading I did on my other channel. But I was talking about how, you know, um, the Sagittarius energy that's coming forth is there to propel a lot of people very far forward very quickly. But the only way you can ever get um, something to do that is by creating enough resistance so that when it is let go, it can go. And so right now, what a lot of us are feeling also is that resistance, that pull, that pull, that pull. Now, here's a critical moment where the temptation will be to think that the pull and the tightness and all of the other shenanigans that are happening is defeat, but it's actually not. It's the setup to success right? It's a setup to breakthrough, I should say. I don't like that word success. It's a setup to breakthrough, okay? Um, and at every turn, these energies, beings, groups, factions, corporations, institutions, whoever it is that your battle is with, and all of us have different ones that are, are, are more invested in our destruction than some, you know, whoever the fuck those beings may be, this is when... Um, they up their um, ante because they're trying to get you. I mean, think about it strategically. If you don't want somebody going somewhere, the closer they get to that, the more you're going to fight to stop them. That's exactly what this is. So a lot of that is what you're feeling. So we're going to go into um, some of these energies tonight. We're going to pick them apart. We're going to see. Um, we're going to see what else there is to know. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go into one of my, um... no, these are going to my herbal deck. Let's go into my herbal wisdom deck. What plant wants to speak to us and why? Okay, something flipped, what flipped? Or was I just seeing things? Yeah. Okay, I don't see it, maybe I'll see it again. What plant wants to speak to us? I bright, that's right. I bright, the removal of illusions, clear vision, prophetic dreaming, increasing third eye power and clairvoyance to see all aspects of the situation. Okay, so um, this is, in, and then we have allspice at the bottom. So this is speaking about the need to, allspice is all about your ability to command your own energy. Allspice is really great for um, helping you to, um, to make sure that um, whenever you're doing a working, if you need that extra commanding power, and when I say commanding power, I mean if you are doing um, a working uh, to uh, you know return to sender or to break a spell or to uncross certain energies or to call in certain things, you know, um, when you are in the midst of battle, sometimes it helps to have something extra to add the energy to the working, right? And this is where certain, um, you know, certain extras can, can help. So for example, all spice is a great spice to work with when you need to exert your will upon a situation, especially and specifically, because this is how I work with energy, you know, specifically when someone is trying to do things very consciously to command their will over your reality, okay? So allspice helps to um, also bring the energy of breakthrough. So it helps to um, bring extra energy and power to a working because it helps you to align your will with your intention and what it is you're doing. It helps to focus the energy. Okay, and eyebright is also a herb that speaks about focus, but it speaks about the focus that can come. You use eyebright when you want to see things clearly, when you want illusions to be collapsed, when you want to um, connect more clearly with your third eye, okay, when you want to see what it is that somebody or someone's are trying to stop you from seeing and connecting with. So just the fact that um, Eyebright has come out also shows me um, that there are attacks against the third eye because Eyebright comes out to say, here, I want to help you with that. So Eyebright is here to bring a breaking of the illusions and therefore clarity to see the full picture. 
as opposed to also um, when these energies come, they want to fragment you and not only fragment you like emotionally and mentally, um, they want to fragment your physical reality um, because they want you to connect with the spiritual stories of you that are fragmented that they've created. And I'm not going to get into that tonight about how I've, I've said it in so many videos. Okay, you can go to so many videos where I talk about how energy is manifested from as above, so below, how it goes through each plane and the importance of aligning yourself with each plane. That's what we're doing when we're healing. Partly what we're doing is we're learning how to align ourselves. Divine alignment is about learning how to match our men. The mental plane is, first of all, recognizing um, where the spiritual fuckery is going on, but also recognizing your spiritual truth so you can then align um, the energies of your mental and your emotional planes with your spiritual truth. So now you're creating that in your material reality as opposed to everything else that was going on before because um, your mental and emotional planes were tuned into and programmed into the spiritual fuckery that these fuckers have been trying to get us all to, um, to, to tune into as opposed to our truth. Okay. So, um, Eyebright is here to, um, to help you uh, put the pieces together where there's an energy right now that's wanting to fragment you and to bring confusion, to get you, really what it is, it's to get you to connect with the spiritual story that they've created for you. And so it's uh, programming your thoughts and your feelings through these attacks, trying to pull you into lower states of you know, despair and fear and all of that in order to get you to attach yourself to a false spiritual story so that you are the conduit for that because you've matched your thoughts and your feelings with that um, lie and therefore you are creating it on the earth planes. So this is why right now there's a lot of fear flying. There's a lot of fear flying for a few reasons. Like I was bringing up the, I don't think I landed with this, but I was bringing up, you know, about the healing crisis and detoxing. As we heal, as we ascend, um, as we uh, let go of these toxins that have been a part of our reality on every plane, mentally, emotionally, materially, and spiritually, they are free flying. A lot of them. So on the one hand, we have a lot of fear that we are like detoxing. And essentially, it has to, uh, you know, there are many ways you can deal with that energy. You can ground it and, and call it back in its polar, in its polarity, you know, so it can feed you something that's going to help you to rise. Um, or you can also send it back to the ones who are casting it because it's their uh, karmic responsibility to deal with all of the consequences and repercussions of what they've chosen to use their own God consciousness to create or miscreate. So you have options in how you, uh, how you deal with that energy. And at every turn, it's going to change in accordance with um, how much you've elevated so at the beginning, you probably want to be sending a lot of that shit back because you need to clear your fields. But when you get later on and you have uh, found this place of balance, then you start to tap into your power to alchemize this energy. And when they send it into your fields, you transmute it into its polarity and you use it for yourself. Right? Um, so on the one hand, there's, there's all that flying shit that's happening because... Uh, you know, people are healing and the earth is healing, you know. And then on the other hand, there's also the, 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 the very purposeful fuckery they enact against us in order to pull us into states of fear, especially this time of the year. As soon as the holiday season hits in the West, they love to drag people into energies of death. They love to use the Scorpio energy in these windows in order to, to do that. So on the one hand, you have the increase in that kind of fuckery in those energies, right? To try to get people into low states, utilizing energies of untimely death. Because there are many ways to die. You don't have to die physically. You can die mentally. You can, you can use death uh, energy to attack a person, to kill their dreams, to kill their hope to kill their faith, to kill their drive, to kill their motivation, to kill their opportunities, their options, their money, their love, 
There's so many fucking ways you can do use the energy of death wrongfully against another being. And that's what the fuck all of these energies are, you know, at work trying to do, trying to create in many of our realities right now. Right? So, and, and to that extent, they use all manner of things that, you know, there's just so many layers to how these attacks work. But um, you have that too. And then, and this is the one where I feel like a lot of you might be, um, might be feeling this a lot right now. If you're feeling a lot of fear and you don't know why, where it's coming from, a lot of this is the emotional connection you still have to those beings who are in your personal, intimate reality, or they were once upon a time, who have been attacking you. And I said this like two readings ago, I said when you have had um, a deep emotional resonance with another being, when they, um, when they try to enter your energy, even by thinking powerfully about you, ruminating on you, you still are probably going to feel that shit. And you're, you, at every turn, when you realize that, you're going to have to deal with how you want to you know, move forward with that whether it's you do cord cutting again, what, you know, whatever it is that you do in order to clear yourself of that energy, it's an ongoing thing. And the deeper the bonds, the, the deeper the emotional resonance, the more um, intense it feels when um, that energy begins to be opened. So if I give you an example, if you have a family member, a close family member, who has been doing the shady, shisty shit to you, whether it's been for a little while or for your whole life, it doesn't matter. And now they're worried. What you're feeling when you're sensing that fear, even if you don't connect with them anymore, even if you are aware of what it is they've been doing, even if you've done a lot of clearing work, you can be reactivated into that energy because of the intensity of what they're feeling towards you and about you at this time. Be aware. A lot of them are very in their fear and their anxiety about you right now. And what you're feeling and you're sensing is that. And you'll know that that's the case also because where you where it will really resonate in terms of if you go into your body and, and ask your body where, where, the, where the energy is sitting, it will really be your heart and your solar plexus where you feel it. For some of you, it might be your throat, but it's not going to, I don't think it's really going to be your throat from, from the fear so much as it is, it's going to be the throat from them wanting to silence you in some way, shape or form because of what you know, or, or what you're saying, or, um, and it could even just be, you're saying it to, to another person and they don't want to be exposed in that way. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter, but, um, concentrated really in the heart and the solar plexus. Breathe, breathe. Getting ready to rise again. And that would be the key phrase also with these Phoenix activations, getting ready to rise again. Well, if you're rising again, what, what are you rising from? Well, some of you are waking up like your old golden age legacy. You're rising up, you're rising again. And in that you've got not only uh, close intimate beings afraid, you've got the very ones afraid who were using those beings to, to, um, to keep you um, quiet, to keep you submissive to keep you asleep because they knew what your waking up meant not only for for their wallets but for the state of the earth and the world it means their agendas are over right we have um Strangely lonely, holding on way too tight. This again is an Aquarian energy, 17, because of the 17. So there's, um, there's someone holding on very, very tight to um, what it feels like it's, they're holding on very tight. Go ahead. They're holding on very tight to um, 
how do I describe this? They're holding on very tight to the state that things are in right now. It's almost like um, what they're showing me. It's like there are people right now who feel like they're falling. They feel like they're falling and they know the falling is inevitable, but they're trying to, to, to hold on to the moment before they actually fall. And in holding on to the moment before they actually fall, because again, this is how energy works, how it's going to feel for you or how what's happening for you energetically, if you're not a karmic fucking asshole that's just, uh, um, uh, what is it that they do? Uh, Cross-watching, yeah, if you're not one of those beings, um, then... Um, what it's doing for you is it's it's got you in a holding pattern over where you're 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 headed, um, and they're showing me like a, a circling plane. They keep on using this language with me this week, holding pattern. You know how like before a plane is able to land, the air um, air traffic control has to has to clear them, and so a lot of the time, if there's too much happening um, on the runway, if, if there's a plane that needs to to take off or there's a, pl a plane that is presently taking off, they've got to um, be in this holding pattern before they're cleared for landing. And in that holding pattern, it's like they're they're hovering and circling until they, they get the, the, the all clear. It's kind of that energy I'm feeling right now. There's this holding pattern, like one plane is ready to uh, take off and another is ready to land. For some of you, you're also holding on way too tight to something. And what you might be holding on way too tight to is an old story about yourself that um, co like corroborated the narrative that these beings needed you in in order to um, continually have you asleep and have you blinded and have you fragmented. So you need to look at where um, you need to let things go. And I'm, I'm actually doing some writing on this right now. Um, on this very concept of holding on to two things too tightly, it is um, it is matrix conditioning, and really what it is is uh, <laughs> it is uh, the results of trauma that have us always holding on to things too tightly um, because we never know what is going to happen in the next moment, and so we like to hold on to at least what we know, even if it's not good for us. It's a form of trauma programming, and so we all do it to some extent, but victims or victors that have um, had to overcome a lot of trauma in their lives or, or rise above it or heal through it, um, we often have an issue with with letting go of things because um, the the holding on to something gives a very false sense of security um, in situations that have been really volatile where you never knew what was going to happen next. So it's almost like um, that that phrase, "Better the devil you know than the devil you don't." But because we've lived in this collective trauma where we've all been, you know, traumatized on different levels and to different degrees. And it's across the board, narcissists are extremely traumatized individuals. And the way you know that is because people in their power and their strength would never enact that kind of nastiness on another being and, and feel nothing about it. Narcissists train themselves how not to have a conscience and how not to feel a certain way, um, how to tune themselves out of empathy. They train themselves to do that in order not to connect with the pain of what it is they've been through. So we're all traumatized. It's just, what did you do with your trauma? How did you use, have you used it to, to rise in the matrix or um, rise in the matrix and hurt, and hurt others and to keep those trauma cycles going? Or have you, or have you risen in your humanity and said, what the fuck? I'm not going to be a person who continues to hurt myself and hurt others um, for this false sense of, of moving forward in life. Fuck a bunch of that. I'm not doing that shit. And that's what makes the difference. We've all been traumatized. It's the choice. And this is why this whole idea of being chosen is also a choice. At every turn, you have to choose the chosen path. It's not like, oh, you're chosen and all of a sudden um, everything uh, gets given to you. That's not how it works. And this is also where we're about to see a lot of things shift in the spiritual community because there's a lot of beings running around thinking that the chosen badge is a, is a title that they just get to, you know, have 
as opposed to um, something that they have to uh, to to wield with authority through the the proper um, methods and modes of healing self and applying um, applying these lessons and this wisdom in order to raise their frequency and then assist others in doing the same. You get what I'm saying? Um, there's a lot of narcissism in the spiritual community that come that falls under this false title of being uh, chosen. There's a lot of narcissism in the spiritual community under the false title of people being earth angels. A lot of it. A lot of it. And that is coming to an end also. Okay, um, and I shouldn't say coming to an end, but there is a, a there's a tipping point. Let's put it that way. Um, so what came out here is a, per, a powerful personal growth, Nautilus Princess. So this is the Emperor and the Magician. If you're looking at the four and the one, so this is all about um, on the one hand somebody I think this came out before but this is about um, in, a, in the last reading I don't remember that this is something about um, someone using again the power of their God consciousness in, man, in manipulative ways to try to limit other people in their own God consciousness too but it's also speaking of breaking out of that and taking back your position of being Godhead over self right and so what I'm feeling is like there's this battle that's going on right now. Um, if this is your reading, and for many of us, for many of you, there's this battle that's going on right now between um, holding on to holding on to an old story, an old narrative that maybe you don't even know how to fully let go of. Maybe you don't know how to fully let go of it yet, even though you're trying, and that's fine. You know, that's fine. It will it will dissipate for as long as you have that desire and you keep on, um, uh, uh, you know, um aspiring to, 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 to overcome it and you do what you have to do um, mentally and emotionally to assist yourself to do that, you will break through that energy. But right now it's feeling very, very tight. Like it almost, um, it's almost tempting to fall back into the old narrative because there's a very real energy of despair and defeat that I keep on feeling on both sides. There's, this, there's a despair and defeat on the side of those who are, um, you know, um, they're still trying to keep things alive that should, like, they're still trying to beat a dead horse. But then there's despair and defeat on the side of those who are getting ready to be catapulted up higher because um, th there's a lot of illusions and a lot of, like I said, fear projections. And the point of that, again, remember, because everything is divine in nature, is all for your, your own growth and your own activations and your own, um, you know, rising higher in your, in your prowess as alchemist. What it's doing is it's heating up the metal to get rid of the dross. Because here's the thing, you know, if these things are still putting us in these states of fear, then there's still lies about ourselves that we're, we're believing. There are still energies that um, we're needing to take a look at because um, those are ultimately what, what are being hit. Every time we're being challenged to go into a higher frequency, the density that kept us out from that before is being activated. And that's going to manifest in your reality as a fear. As a, um, instead of pushing forward, it's going to be the thing that wants to push you back. And, and sometimes it's going to be tempting to be like, okay, maybe I should, maybe, maybe I don't have the power or the strength to go forward and navigate these waters. No, you do. You do. You do. At the bottom of the deck, we got 44, fairy of the green world. The natural world needs you. So this again is um, 44 is, um, is protection, it's stability. For me, 2033 on my clock, for me it is how the Divine Mother speaks and tells us that we're safe. That's how I, I interpret 44. I think some people say that 44 also means like angelic protection, right? Um, and it will often come up when you are 
in a time of transition, um, in a time where um, you have a reason to feel afraid because you're shifting into something, some, some shifting into an energy that you're not familiar with. And so, of course, uncertainty will bring healthy amounts of fear. And this is the energy that arises to let you know that you're okay, you're on track, um, you're protected. And that is also okay to feel these things. It's okay to feel these things. Um, what's not okay is to allow these energies to take us under, but it's fine to feel. It's fine to acknowledge that we feel. It's fine to acknowledge that we're scared. It's fine to acknowledge that there are areas where we still have vulnerabilities and uh, there are areas where maybe we need to look, um, we need to, to do some more work or maybe they're just us being human because we all, we are human also, you know, so there's so much to take into account if we are to um, look at all of this in a balanced way and treat ourselves with, um, with this energy of challenging um, ourselves to rise, but also having this, uh, this profound amount of compassion and even admiration for um, our own journey and who we are, right? So this is all about that, um, you know, as we move into Sagittarius, this is temperance energy, tempering energy right now. And um, the fairy of the green world, the natural world needs you. This is, again, this energy of... Um, I'm feeling like uh, things being pulled both ways. So this polarity energy is 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 like I said when you have um, uh, an energy that is working in both poles very actively, then we're going to experience it very powerfully in both poles. So we're going to right now in the world we're experiencing the highest of frequencies that have been possible on our planet in thousands of years. You know, but then we're also seeing the lowest of human behavior that has also been the bedrock upon which all of our destruction has grown and, 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 and fed upon, if that makes sense. So um, at, at a certain point, it will come into balance. But there's this uh, very real pulling at the poles um, energy that I've been feeling. And so um, like a splitting it's a pulling at the poles because there's a splitting. Um, there's another splitting taking place. And um, the thing about it is that this energy, whoever's trying to hold on too tightly, um, they're not going to succeed. They're not going to succeed because they're battling against, um, they're battling against energies that they're not equipped to fight. Um, they're battling against uh, not only the natural world, but they're battling against the new natural order that is coming back to establish itself. They can't win against that. You know, and on the other hand, also, this is um, a word of encouragement for you who, you know, those of you who are holding on too tightly to a narrative that you don't know how to let go of, that narrative isn't going to win over you either because you're too precious to what has to happen moving forward for as long as you continue to fight and you don't, you don't give in to it, right? Some of this energy was coming out. I did a, a reading yesterday on my Substack, and I put it on the community board. It's actually, it's free. To, anyone can access it. That's why I put it on the community board. But it's a pick a shape reading, kind of a pick a card. I used to do all of these elaborate readings on my Instagram once upon a time, pick a cards. And I kind of um, was feeling like doing it yesterday. So I did. And it's a pick a shape reading. And some of that was coming up in some of those readings yesterday, some of this energy specifically. So... Um, if you're interested in diving into the energies that I was picking up yesterday that I wrote about, you can do that through the link on the community board. Okay, let's go into a karmic deck because um, we're already 43 minutes in. big deck so let me split it in half okay let's see we have a few yep they were told who you are long before you knew and this is something that is probably about to come out um 
for some of you. And when I say come out, it's, it's like, it's feeling like this whole energy could come out in a myriad of ways. On the one hand, um, I think there are about to be some exposures um, on the global front that are going to begin to, um, are, are going to begin to um, reveal to you or unveil to you the truth of, of who you are and some of the stuff based upon just the things that are happening on the one hand. Um, on the other hand, for some of these people there, the deals that they did uh, where they were um, brokering your energy, they have not been able to, to, um, to satisfy the requirements for those deals. And as such, um, it's almost like there's an inevitability of the truth coming up as, uh, as those deals fail. Um, and that could happen in a variety of ways. Um, I don't want to go into specifics for this, but it really could, but I've been feeling this very strongly because, um, the amount of us who've been involved in all manner of experiments that, we, we weren't aware of, I do believe it's a grander number than what most people are aware of because a lot of the time people focus on how um, these agencies have uh, like abducted people in the physical to do things, okay? Um, but what people are not, what, what I feel is about to start coming out over the next two years is a lot of about the truth of who we are energetically and how that has been um, constantly hacked into and has created states for people. And I, I talked about this in another reading like months ago. Um, and if I remember and I can find it, I'll link it below. But it was where I went into how um, if you are traumatized on the astral planes, you can still materialize those symptoms here in real time. And so some beings have been hacked into in the astral planes and they've been put through some really traumatic experiences and they've come back into, um, into this consciousness or, or, or conscious awareness in this um, you know, reality and they have dealt with um, the aftermath of the symptoms as if it happened to them materially. And there are a lot of agencies that when they are exposed for these crimes against humanity, they will be fucked. And this is a, a lot of the reason why these uh, agencies work with these orders to get these families into initiations also in order to secure access to their blood, blood rituals, right? In order to um, have access to their bloodlines to get the spiritual permission they need, permission, quote unquote, they need, spir I should say spiritual permit they need, false permit they need in order to um, energetically hack into other beings from that bloodline on the spiritual planes. Hmm. They made several deals that were contingent upon keeping you miserable and alone, stuck in lower frequencies and timelines. So for many of them, um, the time is up for uh, for making good on those deals. And so if you've been dealing with a lot of lower energies, that, that is, again, another attempt to lower your frequency because the deal that they made is contingent upon keeping you in a low state so that you're harvestable, okay? They're mad you ain't their mama or their daddy. So a lot of these beings right now have a lot of um, resentment towards you, and this could be directly the ones who have been involved in this or just people in your energy in general. Um, they're hating on your, your your the fact that you you are healing or your healing ability or how far you've gotten because you've done the hard work of healing yourself because of their own mother and father wounds that they have not yet been able to um, you know do a lot of the work that they need to do in themselves and so they want to um, again th this is the energy that I was talking about before there's still this energy of people who want to come into your fields and make you their and, and make you their savior. People love to do that. It, this is one of the greatest downfalls of humanity is that everyone is searching for God. 
outside of themselves instead of recognizing that that um, connection comes from going within and connecting with source. So at every turn, beings have been conditioned and programmed to try to find the answers everywhere else and in other people. And here's the thing, people can guide you into your power. I can guide you. I can activate the fuck out of you to help you rise, but not if you're not open and willing to do the work. Okay, so um, and that's where people get upset because they want to come to you and expect you to work some kind of miracle in their lives. And that's not your place. That's not my place. No one is here to be God. And really what it is, is that they want a narcissist because that's what it is. Narcissists are the ones who want to be God over other people. We're not here to be God over anyone else. You're not here to save anyone. You're only here to learn how to reconnect with source and save yourself and help other people to do exactly the same thing for themselves so we all can rise as interdependent, autonomous, sovereign beings who are all in our power working together as opposed to creating these power structures where there are some up here on top and there are a, a, a grand fucking pyramid scheme. And that's not to say that there aren't people who are designed to be in positions where they are guiding, you know, groups of people, but not in the way that it was uh, this uh, kind of uh, power fuckery was wielded in the matrix. And a lot of people, especially those who haven't, see haven't healed, they come into spirituality and they want to apply the same methods and rationale that destroyed them from the matrix into the spiritual, into their spiritual reality. And when they come against beings like me or people who are divinely aligned, they don't like it because it means that they have to push one more time or several more times, but at this juncture, they have to push again against another lie or illusion. And at every turn, when you get presented with the opportunity to push against a liar or an illusion, to push deeper into your own autonomy, you have a choice. And some people choose to do the work and to push past, no matter how hard and dense the energies may be, no matter how much the fuckery goes on and um, the mental energies wanna tell them they're wrong and everything um, is fighting against them, all of the illusions of the matrix are, 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 are coming together to, to pull them back into the lie and they still push past. While others want to come up and, uh, you know, they, they uh, get the opportunity to push past the illusion and instead of doing the work, they get triggered and they're like, you're the problem. Okay, I'll be the problem. Okay, we'll pretend. You like illusions, right? You like illusions. Let's pretend. We'll pretend. I can pretend for you because I don't pretend for myself. So you want me to pretend with you that I'm the problem? Okay, I'm the problem. Like there's this message, like there's so much growing the fuck up that people have to do right now, energetically speaking. Energetically speaking, people need to learn basic energetic principles if they plan to move higher in this next, um, cycle. It's as simple as that. These aren't my rules. These aren't my rules. This, these are just facts. You can like it or lump it, you know, put it on a crumpet. Either way, it doesn't, you know, it's not going to change. It's not going to change what's happening for people who are, who are actively doing the work to engage in what needs to be done to become energetically responsible. Because that's what it's about. It's about us being energetically responsible. Anyway, they threw the rocks, hit their hands, and arrived on the scene to help and rescue. Yes, yeah, so for many of you, this is, again, this age-old story of people who kept you in very sad situations. And then um, in order to keep you uh, contained and under their thumb, they also played the role of savior for you. So they were casting the energies and the spells to put you in despair and to, to get you in despair in positions. And just before you fell all the way, you know, they would, they would come in and, and, and save you from yourself, right? And this is exactly the energy that's coming out here because this is what needs to be annihilated in the spiritual community also. There's no more making people saviors. Stop putting people on pedestals. You've got anyone on a pedestal, take them down. Please don't put me on a pedestal. Take me all the way down and put me on even keel with you.
Because for one thing, there's for one thing, you know, when you put someone on a pedestal, that means that you are putting yourself lower. That's one thing. And for another thing, it's not fair to put someone else on a pedestal because then you are expecting them to give you something that you apparently can't give yourself. That's hypocrisy. That's pharisaical. Get people off pedestals and let them fucking just be human beings. Accountable ones, you know, and, and, and everything in balance in terms of what you accept from them because they're healing and they're human and all of that, like your own boundaries and all of them. But get people off pedestals. Give this person time and space so they can do the right thing on the fence. On the fence. And I think that is more like a, um, it's a reflection of the energies that are happening right now. Many people are, um, it's like it, this energy of everyone's, like that tipping point energy is like a kind of on the fence energy. And we're all being given the opportunity right now to kind of do the right thing in terms of wherever we are, whatever level we're on. We're all on this fence energy. But there are some people who, um, in terms of the time and space um, to do the right thing for them, it's expired. It's expired. But I also feel like this is um, also this time and space um, card is speaking on a concept that they've been showing me, especially today, about how they used time and space to trap us. You know, because time it, time is the only thing that is both infinite and finite. Um, and the concepts surrounding time and, and what they've done through their uh, Saturnian magic, using like lower... Um, lower expressions of the Saturnian consciousness in order to fuck with us. Uh, there's something here about levels of exposure coming forth um, publicly, but also internally in how we relate to time and what the true limitations of time and space are upon us as we rise higher in frequency. Because as you rise higher in frequency, the finite becomes infinite, which is what they didn't want you to access. So as you rise higher in frequency, what they've told you is finite, you begin to um, you begin to climb and have access to the infinite. And that's how you reawaken your multidimensional ability. That's how you actually begin to be able to utilize your light body and to travel multidimensionally and to bring um, your, your um, true cosmological abilities um, here on earth in real time. And so there's... Um, I don't want to go too deep into that message tonight, but there is something coming up about that right now too. They opened portals and worked with anti-ascension beings to harness you and get wealth, status, or fame. For some of them, those anti-ascension beings, um, so when I say anti-ascension beings, these beings are anti-Christ. And they're anti-Christ not because they're anti-Christ like the Christian thought of, you know, anti-Jesus, which is again, um, the way they twisted the energy to, to, to trap people once again. Um, the Antichrist energy is the energy that keeps us from ascending. It's the energy that locks our um, chakra systems down and stops the ability for Kundalini to rise and for us also to become the rainbow bridge because we are energetically back in connection um, with source and then also we are able to stream all of that information into the earth planes. So antichrist agendas are against our ability to ascend into our divine truth. So these beings opened up, um, worked with antichrist beings. And so um, they could very well be antichrist beings um, that are invisible. They could actually be, you know, have skin suits also, it doesn't matter, but they worked with them to um, harness you and get wealth, status or fame. So again, this is uh, to do with the fact that 
They made deals that were contingent upon keeping you miserable and alone. And they worked with these anti-Christed energies to make sure that um, you had issues aligning your energy field, opening your chakras. Um, they put blocks in your chakras. Um, they did all manner of things to obstruct your ability to, to, um, to connect and wield the power of your own energy. You know, and there's a myriad of ways they did that. I think I've shared in a reading before when I first began to, um, you know, scan my energy field a few years ago. The first thing that came up was I saw this symbol in my root chakra and then I had to go and do some research to figure out what the fuck it was. And it was a biohazard symbol, a fucking biohazard symbol that had been put into um, my root chakra. And... Um, there's a whole bunch of reasons uh, behind that, including family toxicity and history and all of that stuff. But the whole reason why it was in mine is because think about when you see a biohazard symbol. A biohazard symbol is what they put on the waste in hospital bins that nobody's supposed to go close to. So think about that because we are run off of symbols. And so, I don't want to get into that. That's too much. Okay. They didn't know your... Um, spiritual ranking and now they're scared they should be you should be fucking afraid because it is you know a uh, receipt season it's receipt season for those of you who continually fucked around and you you you, you didn't think you'd find out it's about time for you to find out and and there are receipts for all of the fucking around you were doing when you thought that no one was going to find out Okay, okay. Keeping secrets that they know will hurt you. Master manipulator. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of this is pretty self explanatory at this point, especially if you've been rolling with me for a minute. Like, <sighs> I've been getting this so, so fucking much over the past, like, I want to say two weeks, your ancestors are sick of their shit. They're tired of their shit. Okay. Your ancestors are tired of their shit. And I ain't talking about the bloodline ancestors because some of them bloodline ancestors, ooh, I was about to say asses. Some of the bloodline ancestors are the asshole, um, assholes that open the gates to these entities. And because they don't want to take karmic responsibility either, they've been helping these other people in your family to keep those gates open. So I ain't even talking about, you know, your bloodline ancestors. I'm talking about the ancestors that are here to help you and the earth ascend, whether they come through your bloodline or your divine lineage, your protectors, your guardians, the ones who they've been, they've been recently, a lot of them trying to disable or, or stop from, from protecting you, you know, in a multitude of ways, which is just really fucking stupid to mess with people's guardians and protectors as if they didn't become people's guardians and protectors because they're lethal. Like, that's just really fucking stupid. But that just shows you levels of desperation and arrogance where that will take people into, you know, straight up Delulu land. But there's a remedy to bring them back to Earth. There is. Okay. Let's get a message from Archangel Michael and call it a fucking day. a song like on the tip of my mind but I can't access it <laughs> and I can't be fucked to push past right now so I'm sorry there was a song download that wants to come through but I don't feel like fighting right now to get it Regain your focus and open your heart. 
welcome abundance into your life. Regain your focus. Trivial life matters are distracting you from your goals. Archangel Metatron and I are here to help you stay grounded. Okay, so this is showing me right here that, um, again, there are these energies that are very much designed to distract you and to take you under and to, and to attach you once again to an old story about yourself for you to believe it about yourself so that it stops you, you stop yourself from moving forward. And Archangel Metatron and Archangel Michael are saying, yo, remember who the fuck you are and focus on that. Some of you, and I, I'm probably going to have to do a whole other reading on this, some of you have just received such powerful angelic activations through this 1111 portal and new moon in Scorpio window that activated strands of DNA that haven't been activated on this earth since the previous golden age. Some of you received such powerful activations that have increased your powers of judgment. They told me more judgment angels have arisen. And it's not that you weren't already here and walking and wielding that power that you've been uh, divinely authorized to to wield and i'm talking about people who when you when sometimes people um sometimes some of you are literally sent into the sent to certain people and certain people are sent to you and this has been your whole life and you haven't even known it they've been sent to you to act as an instrument of karmic justice okay and it works both ways so if a person comes into your fields and it's time for them to level up when they come into your awareness, it's like activating them to receive their reward. But when other fuckers come into your fields that have been fucking around and it's time for them to find out, you're activating them also into their justice. And some of you received some really very big activations over this past weekend. And what occurs, I wrote about this in the um, on in my substack, I'm trying to remember if this was one of the free readings I did. I don't know, but either way, I wrote about this in my substack around these new moon and Scorpio energies because what happens when you receive a major activation is it's very, very common to feel like you're on top of the world and then all of a sudden, Curse flat. You feel like a, like the mortalist of the mortal again. Or what do they call them in, in Harry Potter? Muggles. muggles, thank you. You feel like the muggliest of the muggles. The muggliest of the muggles. That's pretty fucking funny. The muggliest of the muggles. Muggles. You feel like you're the muggliest of the muggles. Like within 24, within a couple of hours, you go from like sky high and you've seen and you've touched your divine reality here on earth as it is in the heavens and then muggly muggle, right? And the reason for that is because there has to be a calibration of your fields where now you choose to rise. This is what the Phoenix energies are about now. Also, you have to choose to rise. This is why rise. This is why they're coming through so emphatically tonight because for some of you, they're like, get up. Don't you remember we showed you a few days who the fuck you are? Get up now and rise. Bitches, take up your pets and rise. You're not a muggly muggle. Rise. We showed you who you are and now you want to forget. And the reason that you're feeling that way is because um, I was saying in this, um, in the article is when you, um, your, your energy field has expanded to support a higher frequency and higher reality, if you don't rise up to meet it, what you're doing is you are maintaining the old energy in a new energetic um, field. And so there will be a disturbance because they don't match. Jesus talked about it. I think it's in the book of Luke where he says, you cannot put new wine into old wineskins. It will burst. You must put new wine, new earth wine. You're the new earth wine. Remember, you are the, the vine, the grapes. You must put new earth divine of the vine. You must put new earth wine into new earth bodies, new earth cask. And so what some of us are still doing is we're trying to put the old wine into the new 
um, or the other way around. I think it works either way. Um, the way I, I, I think about it in my mind, I think of it either way, but we're trying to put the old wine, I'm gonna say it again, we're trying to put the new wine in the old, um, in the old uh, like wine jars. Because back in the day, they weren't literal jars. They were made out of, um, I think, animal skin. And so if you put new wine into the animals, in, into the old animal skin that's been holding wine, which can be very, you know, acidic, um, it's going to wear through over time. And why would you waste the possibility of having that new wine, um, you know, ha having the possibility of it bursting? Why would you do that when you done finish stomping on all of those grapes? alchemizing all of those wounds, pushing through all of those densities. You know, why? Why would you do that? So, you know what I mean? So, it's very normal when you um, have a very high frequency coming into a lower um, dimension for um, the initial you know, um, clashing of the energy for you to feel it, right? But then you have to acclimate your fields and you have to um, expand to hold it also, or you have to rise up to meet it. Otherwise, then you start to get symptoms of feeling uncomfortable and miserable because you're trying to live in a frequency that no longer is in alignment with you no longer is your truth. When you start to get uncomfortable in a situation, it's because the frequency that you are in, whether it's internal or with another being, it's no longer in alignment with where you're supposed to be. So when you get an activation and you're on top of the world and a few days later, you're feeling like a muggly muggle, it's because you um, have to now rise, you have to make the choice to attune your mental and emotional fields to rise into the higher reality. And sometimes that takes time. But the point is that in the midst of that, everything is going to make you want to believe that you're a muggly muggle so that you don't rise, so that you stay there, so you don't grab the activation and run. Welcome abundance into your life. Woo! Prosperity is on its way. Do you have faith? That source will heal your financial challenges. And you know, um, finances, abundance, all of that is um, a reflection of your, your energy flow in general. So this can literally speak about finances, but this can also speak about the removal of the stagnancies that have kept you from um, moving ahead into, you know, the fullness of what it is that, that you want to do or that you know it's time for you to do. Okay, so oh, I'm going to get going. I hope that this reading was helpful and insightful. Um, for all information on how to work with me, you can find that in the description box below. Um, please, when you come to me, know what it is that you are wanting to, unless you have questions about the process, but all of my services are on my website. And... Um, you can find out everything that is available and all you have to do is then email me and let me know um, what it is that you're interested in. Otherwise, a lot of the time what I'm doing is I'm just directing people back to my website to get the information that they could have already gotten. Okay, so um, that's one thing for those of you interested in uh, joining Substack, whether you want to come over there and join um, the free subscription or whether you want to sew into my work and um, receive all access to the archive, then um, you can do so. I'll put the link for that below. Also, thank you to those beautiful souls who have donated to my work, whether it's through Substack, um, Dex for the channel, or uh, donating to my PayPal. Um, all information for that is in the description box below. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. Yes, I um, will see you guys. I'm organizing my cards. I will see you guys again soon. Um, yes, until next time, take care.